Hi, I'm Michael Alec, and I'm an artist and party promoter. You know, resilience is something that I think it's probably one of my strongest qualities, and it's the one that I noticed the least until I came home recently from prison and realized that I was able to somehow make it through 17 years of, you know, prison. In sort of one piece, people are always telling me that, you know, I have courage or that I'm courageous. I was, you know, how, what courage it took to get through. I really didn't see it as courage getting through because it's, it's sort of like I have no choice. It was like saying somebody is courageous for jumping out of a second story window when the house is on fire. You kind of just do what you have to do. And so I saw it more as resilience. I was just able to make it through that time without, I guess, killing myself or without I'm going crazy. But, you know, I, I developed, I spent a lot of the time in solitary confinement and I, I developed, I developed little games to keep me, keep my brain occupied, I guess. And so every day I would pick a different topic and then I would just think about that topic until there was no more to think about. And I remember one day I thought about the most, the happiest day of my life, which was, I, weirdly enough, it was when I was living in the Bronx with Kyoki and I didn't, we didn't have any money and we couldn't afford to pay the rent and we didn't know where our next meal was going to come from, but we had something to aspire to and we knew that downtown Manhattan was calling us and we were going to be something and it, it gave us, it gave us, you know, something to look forward to and that was, you know, that was all we really needed. The most depressing day of my life, ironically, was when I think I had the most money and I was living in a loft in Chelsea and I had come home from a party with, I think, Boy George and it was at a gigantic club and then there was a smaller party at an after hour club and then a smaller party at a hotel and eventually it was just me and some other person. I remember coming home and stopping at the local deli and seeing a magazine that said, are you still in love with your high school sweetheart? And I had taken so much cocaine and rehypnol and special K and heroin that I was kind of feeling kind of loopy. And I thought, you know what? I am still in love with my high school sweetheart. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to call him and I'm going to tell him that he should move to New York and I've got a lot of money and I can afford to support him. And I went inside and I tried to call him and I hadn't spoken to him for 20 years. He hung up on me and told me never to call back again. And it was really terrible. I, I was just in a terrible you know, frame of mind. And at that point, I realized that I was getting dope sick because I hadn't had any heroin in a long time. I was so tired from being awake and from taking all those downers that I couldn't go muster up the strength to go get any more heroin unless I had some cocaine to get me there. Just the ridiculousness and the depressingness of the whole situation really hit me at that point. I thought, you know, what am I doing to myself? Why, why is this happening? Why am I doing this to myself? I guess it was because I had the financial means to do so.